Hi everyone! So today I thought I'll get in front of the camera because I haven't done that in a while and it's nice to just have that sort of like a face-to-face -face experience and um, I just want to catch up on a few things so it's I'm filming it in the middle of uh, August so I still have a couple of weeks to go and uh, where shall we start? Well, first of all, I had my hair cut, which I really am enjoying. I had to cut about, my hair was this long, so I had to cut quite a bit um, just to get rid of the dry ends. And it feels so nice. I'm not regretting it for a second. Sometimes when you go from really long hair to shorter hair, it kind of feels weird, but not in this case. I'm enjoying it so much. I actually enjoy um, putting my fingers um, in, into my hair and just running it through and not having anything to just get stuck there. The last two months, so July and August, have been very, very busy for me. There has been a lot going on as well as um, balancing things in my private life as well. Um, so I guess I just felt like refreshing my look a little bit and during those two months I put so much of my time and energy into other things that I almost forgot about myself. I didn't have to, I didn't feel the need to to kind of, you know, put makeup on and and um, kind of make myself look presentable. Also because I was busy managing and balancing so many other things that that went like just on the last place of, of importance to me and I was doing everything else instead and after about two months of it I, I really had enough of it and I decided I need to feel good. About this happens quite often to mums that stay at home and look after their children and perhaps have a job um, at home or something like a part-time job. We just kind of sometimes neglect uh, ourselves because we have so much going on otherwise and um, it's important to just remember that we need to feel good about ourselves and whatever makes you feel good then go for it you know you I'm, I'm not saying you have to put on makeup to feel good about yourself but to me I'm doing so much otherwise um, that that was one thing that was really missing for me personally and that's what I enjoy so there you go Secondly, um, I might be able to do the big reveal uh, at the end of this month, so end of August. I think it might be pushing it, but it is pretty realistic at this point. So I think it will happen either sort of the very last few days of August or the very first few days of September, but we will... Um, or you will um, see the big reveal and I'm so excited because I have been working on it so hard for months and it's been a project that's really close to my heart and you know I just really really want to share it with you. I have been busy working on that as I said behind the scenes and um, this is the Traveler's Notebook that I used for working and designing my products. <laughs> Uh, in here. So I found it very useful because I have different inserts in here and um, I just kind of would you know make notes and um, drawings and things like that in here and always go back to to this uh, place. So it felt good to me. It feels like a kind of like a working um, notebook that I can a, take everywhere with me when I go on meetings and B, it just feels good to open it up and kind of uh, get something done in it. So it's all in one place. Um, the other thing I wanted to actually mention, which I think I forgot to mention it, is a circle cutter that I got a while ago and I got it for um, memory keeping projects so like creating albums and this little thing is great so it's by Xcut and this brand is actually pretty good I wasn't too certain about it at the beginning but the couple of products that I did get uh, thereafter I really enjoyed so this is a circle cutter 
I'm just going to take it out of the packaging. And it's very simple. This is what it looks like. It's very kind of lightweight. So what it does is just you layer it on some sort of uh, paper that you want to cut in a circle. So, so it could be a circle uh, of watercolor paper, a pattern paper, any type of paper that you want to cut in a circle. And you can go from the diameter of 10 centimeters or 4 inches. This is the smallest size you can cut a circle in. And then you can go up to 12 and a half inches to 32 centimeters in diameter. So it's going to be a huge circle like this. So um, this is uh, a good tool to have if you are into this sort of thing because it's really easy to, to work with it. One thing you have to remember, there's this little cup here. So always put it back on so you don't cut yourself uh, right here. And um, you will need like a cutting mat that you you will cut the um, circles on because you don't want to cut your desk basically. So that's that. Uh, the last thing I want to mention is um, the recent video where I did about the um, mixing and looking at the three blue turquoise colors, watercolors, with yellow oranges. And um, so I think what happened was quite a few of my viewers um, were a little bit confused, perhaps thinking that I did, that that video was to compare uh, the PG-50 side by side, uh, because the both of these, the cobalt turquoise and the cobalt turquoise light by Schmincke and by um, Windsor & Newton, they are the PJ50 uh, pigments. And the other color that I had in there is the Holbein Horizon Blue, which is completely different mix altogether. And I think some of you thought that I was comparing the the blues uh, and and that wasn't it so what happened i just wanted to clarify um i lost a footage which i filmed of the beginning of the video where i actually explained um what was the reasoning behind picking these colors and then somehow i lost the footage and when i re-recorded the intro i forgot to mention so i thought i'll just cl clarify it now um, how this happened and I think I will switch now to my desk because it will probably be easier uh, for me to to show you so let's go to my desk okay so let's have a look basically the colors that um, I started with were these three now these three colors I have seen in um, watercolor misfit on her channel and I think her name is Julia, I'm not entirely sure, but um, I'll try to link that video below. There is also, when you click um, in the description uh, of that video, you'll see a blog post where you can actually go to and see every single color of her featured palette that she put together, and that way you'll know exactly what colors there are. Now, um, so the four or the three colors that I was really attracted to in her palette and I wanted to add to my palette were these three colors, which is the Cadmium Orange by Windsor & Newton and, sorry, not this one, and this one. Yeah, so um, the Cobalt Turquoise by Schmincke and the Horizon Blue by... Um, Holbein. So I thought these three colors were really really beautiful and especially this one is quite unique so it um, it's not a color that you could easily mix with other colors so it's a great color to have and um, I haven't seen it elsewhere so I thought I definitely wanted to have. Now as you can see orange and turquoise they all of course um, look beautiful together so then I decided to add this Cobalt Turquoise Light by Windsor & Newton because three of them looked beautiful together. They just have this um, very subtle kind of 
um, gradation of colors. So if you look here, um, three of them are different and, and really, really pretty. So basically, uh, we have a beautiful, unique kind of sky milky blue. Then we have the blue turquoise type of color and a green um, tint turquoise. And they are really, really pretty. Um, so that's how that happened. Then I decided to look further into her palette. And there are loads of neutral colors that I... Um, before I wouldn't really use that often however I started using them now and I really am enjoying them so there was a color which is like a yellow ochre by Windsor & Newton but I do prefer the Schmincke's color to the Windsor & Newton so that's why I added this one also she had a few very beautiful browns but when I started to look into them I couldn't really um like find them I decided that I wanted a brown that was um, quite unique to add to this kind of color palette and then I chose the gold brown by Schmincke so this is how that happened and then finally she also had a few opaque uh, neutral colors like Naples yellow type of colors and um, at that point I decided to add the Rutile Yellow which is not really uh, Naples Yellow but it's actually quite unique. It's similar in, in, the, in that uniqueness to the Holbein Horizon Blue. It's not a color you could easily mix yourself. Um, it's just really milky and beautiful. So this is how this color palette happened and i just wanted to explain to you in case you didn't understand uh, or it was really unclear in in that video why these specific colors i have picked so this is it for today i hope you enjoyed this little catch-up video and i will see you soon